Hey guys, how's it going? We are in a new location today. We are sitting in my office to discuss Doobie Roaches and Gout. Now, Doobie Roaches are super popular. They are very nutritious. They are a great staple for a lot of reptiles and very easy to breed. But do they have their downfalls? Are there problems with them? Well, I stumbled upon this post on Facebook talking about how this leopard gecko was uh, fed exclusively Doobie Roaches for a year and how it developed gout and later died from it. Um, basically, there's some protein issues, especially how you gut load and feed your Doobie Roaches. That can lead to gout in reptiles uh, or whatever it eats. Um, it actually can kill the Doobie Roach itself when it's feeding in something too high in protein. Um, there's a lot of evidence backing this that I read, and I definitely do think it has some merit. I do think this leopard gecko probably had some other issues, or there's something else at play that led to its death or led to it developing gout. Um, because if a doobie roach is fed uh, accurate protein levels, I don't think it should cause your reptile to develop gout. Um, but I definitely do think uh, this is something people should be aware of who feed doobie roaches, especially how popular they are now. Uh, they need to make sure they're feeding accurate protein levels, nothing like dog or cat food since those protein levels are really high, like 40%. You want to be feeding something 15% or less, which most veggies and uh, uh, fruits should have. Uh, now, this person does note that the leopard gecko they examined did have an exclusive uh, veggie fruit diet. Uh, this is why I think there's other things at play for this leopard gecko, because I don't think uh, the leopard gecko should just die from uh, their roaches being, you know, fed with veggies and fruits. That should be pretty normal. Uh, your gut loading, what you give, like some of the store-bought stuff, those things are usually higher than 15%, so I imagine they might have gut loaded and that could have gave a little bit more protein or there's something else wrong with the, the leopard gecko. But anyway, let's talk about this. Let's talk about some of the evidence behind it. It does make a lot of sense, and I think overall it just speaks to giving your reptile a varied diet. Uh, this was something I was very intrigued with because of Max. Max is my bearded dragon. She doesn't like her green, so I've been doing a lot of research on this. So if you're in the same boat as me, uh, stay tuned. Real quick before I continue, check that lower right hand corner and hit that subscribe button. Turn the bell notification on so you know when I post an update. So basically after stumbling upon this article, I looked in the comments section to see if there's any more details to follow up on this claim. And this is one of the top comments I saw that gave some more of an explanation. I'm going to read it to you guys real quick and then we can discuss it. So I'm only going to read about half of this, but basically this guy says I read an in-depth article about this. Roaches convert protein to urate, which the metabolisms use. They can also store urate when food is plentiful to be used later during times of less food. They also have the ability to excrete urate to feed others. You can starve the urate out of them and feed low protein foods and even straight calcium. Roaches provide a great source of protein, but if fed protein they can contain high levels of urate which is not good and is a contributing factor in gout among other health issues. So basically what it comes down to is that giving too high protein of a diet to a roach and then storing it in their urate is bad when it's transferred to your reptile and it can lead to gout. That's basically what he's saying, and there's a good article that I'll show you some uh, excerpts from in a minute, but uh, that's what it comes down to, is that them storing this urate and transferring it is what the problem is. Uh, now let's look at another uh, comment that I saw to read it real quick. I fed my geckos dubias, but also vary the diet with different worms. The dubias are fed only veggies and fruit. I used to feed a dry commercial dubia diet alongside veggies until I noticed uric acid crystals accumulating in my fat tail gecko's, gecko's stool. She's a vet tech, so she tested it. After researching on my own, uh, I determined it was due to a high protein diet and my boss agreed, removed the dry dubia diet, switched to only veggies and fruits. Within two weeks, the uric acid crystals had greatly reduced and now several months later, her stool is completely normal. Uh, basically, again, what I kind of said at the beginning, if you use a veggie and fruit diet, you should be fine, but those dry dubia diets, those cat foods, those dog foods, those are way too high in protein and they can lead to problems. So that's, uh, you know, coming from someone who has some experience in that comment, uh, something notable and I think it speaks a lot to sort of the conclusion you should take out of this. Now from a really good article that I found in the comments, I'll link that article below, uh, there's some uh, good information collecting about this topic where uh, they actually cite some research and talk to a professor I think at the University of Massachusetts. Uh, that's in the article, but there's references and stuff that will actually give some more information about this. 
but one excerpt I took was uh, about how they learned that doobie roaches are different than most insects. Uh, they have developed to survive on a very low level of protein, 4% uh, compared to 10% for crickets. Uh, this was someone developing some type of food uh, for feeder insects, and they mostly work with crickets, so that's why there's some cricket comparisons. But more interesting was the fact that as part of their evolution, they survive on low protein. They have also developed a unique ability to confer excess dietary protein and uric acid. And that's basically what we just talked about uh, in the last two explanations in those comments. Uh, this could be stored in the body and then converted back to protein when the diet is deficient, meaning that, you know, they, they are lacking uh, their diet, they're not eating maybe. Um, so basically what it comes down to is that they're storing these high levels of uric acid and that leads to gout. Here's another important excerpt kind of giving some uh, qualitative data to it. Basically a normal roach has a lot less uric acid than a roach that was fed 24% protein rodent chow. Uh, you, I'm not sure what the measurement is, I'm not sure how to say it, so I'm not going to even try. But you can see 15 compared to 125, it's a lot more with the 24%, and that's much less than something you get from dog food or cat food. So you can only imagine, I think he says that in the next line, uh, using those what the uric acid would be. So I'm not going to read through this section, I'll give a summary of it in a high level, you can read through it while I'm doing that. Uh, but basically, this is the point in the article where they connect high uric acid levels to gout, uh, saying high uric acid through high levels of protein and other contributing factors that are plentiful in captivity, like dehydration and subpar temperatures, uh, can decrease kidney function, which filters out uric acid from the blood. Uric acid buildup is a primary cause of gout. This is how these reptiles get gout. And basically, anything fed 15% plus protein has a higher risk for high... Uh, basically uric acid levels um, so this is sort of where I got that 15% number it does make sense even a little bit less is fine like 12 to, uh, 12 to 13 but um, you don't want to feed anything too high this is how it all accumulates this is how it all comes together so um, but yeah like I said check the description for this article if you want to read it more in detail now there are some people skeptical about this sort of evidence in this conclusion uh, this guy says in this case it was probably a lack of correct hydration or kidney issues Roaches are high on protein, but it'll take quite the number for that to be the main cause. Um, I think this does kind of connect to the overall conclusion I'm forming here, is that it is possible with very high protein levels, um, and usually doobie roaches will not cause this problem, and there'll be other factors at play, but basically you probably want to keep a varied diet just to be sure and double check the kind of protein the levels you're giving them and what you're kind of gut loading them with. Another sort of critic of this says, I find this very odd since I have eight leopard geckos, which are on dubia mostly. Never any problems, they get other insects sometimes for treats, but they've been eating mostly dubias for four years. Only one had any problems, but it was because she had an ovary blockage. So basically they're saying they've been doing it for a while, and I think this gives further testament that if you feed your dubia roaches right, um, there shouldn't be an issue. Last good skeptical comment I picked out was this one. It says many well-known breeders maintain their leopard colonies on dubia with no issues whatsoever, being a large leopard breeder myself. I know a few, I would wonder if there wasn't other factors at play or misinformation involving roaches. So again, I think this has fallen a line uh, with my thought process. I think maybe the leopard gecko had some other issues that helped get it get gout or something like that. Um, or there was like a really high protein being fed to the roaches. I don't think this is a standard thing if you feed your roaches right. So basically that's what I took away from it. I don't know if you guys agree. If you do, let me know. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Uh, what do you guys think about all this? Do you think it's uh, more of a problem than I'm thinking or less of a problem than I'm thinking? Uh, either way, I did reach out to the person who you know, started this whole discussion. I'm hoping I can maybe get an interview with them to talk about this in more detail. I think my main conclusion from this is, uh, you know, reptiles always deserve a varied diet. Uh, just in general, I'll help uh, get away from these issues. And that, you know, dubias are sort of claimed to be the ultimate feeder insect for uh, those that eat invertebrates, the reptiles that eat them. Um, so I think we should always be wary of possible disadvantage because there is no perfect thing to eat or anything like that. I don't think that means you should, you know, go throw out all your dubia roaches or stop feeding them or whatever. I think you should just be more conscious of what you feed your roaches. So that's sort of the conclusion I'm coming to. Anyway, guys, let me know your thoughts in the comments. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe in the lower right corner um, and turn that bell notification on. I hope you enjoyed and thanks.